60 minutes overtime. Do you ever have the urge to just like go up and touch it? I don't know why I have that urge, but. <laughs> it's a kind of historic. It's, it makes you feel like you're part of something that's, you know, a little more long-term, a little more historic. This week on 60 Minutes, our story is about NASA's next mission to Mars, the rover Perseverance. It's scheduled to launch this summer and land seven months later in an area called the Jezero Crater that's never been explored before. I've worked on all the Mars rover missions. Every this single one. Fit. Every single one. This is the fifth. We met Deputy Project NASA Manager Matt Wallace in early January at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California. He took us into the clean room where Perseverance and the vehicles that will bring it to Mars were built. The actual landing on Mars has got to be a raising moment. It really is. It's, it's nerve wracking. It's certainly the most complex portion of the mission. That entry capsule is entering the outer atmosphere at 12,000 miles an hour, and in seven minutes we have 12, to 12,000 miles an hour? Yeah, yeah, it's moving fast. How do, you, so, how do you slow it down? Well, the first thing that happens is the capsule itself interacts with the atmosphere, and that slows us down to maybe 1,000 miles an hour or so. Uh -huh. And once we get to that point, we deploy an enormous supersonic parachute, big 70-foot parachute. Uh, and that'll slow us down to about 150 to 200 miles an hour. And then the rest of the way, we have to use propulsion uh, to, to take us down to the, the ground. Well, we call it the seven minutes of terror. Katie Stack Morgan is a deputy project scientist for Perseverance. The landing takes about seven minutes. Yep. From what, entry into the atmosphere? Yes. To actually to setting touching down. down on the surface. And during those seven minutes, who controls it? It's largely on its own. I mean, we've programmed it to do what it needs to do. There's not somebody with a joystick watching Mars approaching and moving rover. No, definitely not no joystick. I mean, we can send commands to it, but, but we've programmed the sequence for how it lands, and, and it does that on its own. The landing for any spacecraft is you know, one of the key moments. With Apollo 11, the astronauts had to manually alter the spot where they landed on. Is that right? That's right, yeah. Eagle, Houston, you're a go for landing. Over. So essentially, the rover is now doing what astronauts did on the moon. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Yes, the, the rover has the autonomy to make some of those decisions, not all of them, but some of them. Mars 2020 actually has a brand new technology to help its landing that no other missions have had before, and it's called terrain relative navigation. And we've already mapped the hazards, as best we can tell from orbiter images. As the rover is getting close to landing, it takes a picture, and it compares the picture of the scene that it sees as it's descending to that map of hazards that it has in its brain. Mm -hmm. And it can actually divert away from the hazards that we've already identified on the surface. Wait a minute, that's incredible. It can do that on its own without being that's directed. Right. Yep. And we wanted that capability because sites like this were off limits for previous missions. Uh -huh. And yet these are some of the sites that we're most excited about going to.